Yeah. In fact, I was very excited when I pulled that first card out, and it was a low card as well. And of course, it was hearts, and as a magician, you go, okay, you're always trying to get the suit and that, you go, oh, it's hearts. Well, yeah, it's supposed to be a heart. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like a low card, too, and she got it right. So I was very excited for you at that moment. I was not allowed to do it this time, because things are going to happen at the right time. It all has. Also, as a side note, everyone, if you consult your packets, the agreement, item number six, I do not believe that taking my challenge test in front of a large audience will influence my claim ability in a negative way. Right there. Question for anyone from the JRA. Uh, was this the most visible or largest scale live audience watching? And if so, were there any other ways in which this test was exceptional? I suspect that it probably was the most widely viewed Tolerant from live audience right in the auditorium, but uh, I'm here to that at the same time, I'm told. And how many did we have? 1,700 or something? He had uh, approximately six or 700 in the room with us. We're amazingly quiet. You guys amazed me. <laughs> yes, oh, that amazing quiet. And uh, there were 1,700 people watching live on the internet at the peak, you know, it comes and goes. And uh, a lot of them were from Sweden. At some, at a, actually, at one point, I had to moderate the chat room because. People were talking in Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So my answer, my answer would be though, <laughs> Jeff. I think that you'll agree with me. This is uh, probably the most widely uh, live viewing oh, yes. any test that we've done. Absolutely. This was the most visible, most widely promoted, and most viewed test we have ever done. Okay, Mark. I just have one question. In summation, what what I hear you saying is that. This experience is a stepping stone to something greater, and you're either ready for it or you're not. And there is some reason why you're here that may not have anything to do with playing cards. Am I understand? It is true. Okay. I just wanted to get that. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I can ask a question. Uh, knowing the test protocol beforehand, did you practice at all? Uh, get some envelopes no, and cards? I don't have some. We get this answer all the time, though, from people. We always ask them specifically. Please try a double blind test under the conditions that we've underlined, or outlined, maybe. And uh, please do test yourself independently. And every case, in every case without fail, people have said, no, I don't need to do that because I know it's going to work. So I'm just pointing that out. Maddie, if you look at the packet, Maddie has uh, worked with people before where she's guessed cards that were face down, but not the uncle. Numbers, I think. Numbers, yeah. Numbers, yeah. Numbers, yeah. Numbers, yeah. Numbers, yeah. Okay, Michael. Yeah. A question for the JRA. Uh, was there any concern uh, with something this large scale uh, uh, about exploiting um, uh, and tests this large scale? Is there any concern uh, in exploiting mentally ill or uh, right. that's true? Or, or you know, uh, or any concerns along those lines at all? Well, Michael, we we try very. Uh, hard, and we certainly did in this case, of course, to sort out any such cases. Because there are people out there who are emotionally un unstable in, in many ways, and who make the most incredible claims, much more incredible than the claims that Connie had made. Uh, and we, we effectively have to get rid of them because we don't want to exploit people who are catched in the head, if we can use the common expression. Um, Yes, we, we, we go through a lot of pain to make sure that that doesn't happen. We have to be fair to folks. And uh, I, I think that Connie will agree that we have been perfectly fair and above board with her. And the evidence is still in the envelope, can be examined by anybody. And incidentally, I think that I have to give personal thanks to my good friend, Banachek here, who did an absolutely superb job of doing this correctly, succinctly, and uh, the way the book calls for it. It was a definitive test. DJ, did you Oh, uh, yeah, I guess the question I was going to ask is a little similar to the last question. For the JREF, for the uh, members of the foundation on the, on the panel, um, what sort of quality control, if there is various levels of quality among claimants, do you go through and how do you select among uh, the claimants that you test? Um, I think all of us, uh, can agree that Connie is sincere and, and uh, you know, she, uh, she's not trying to pull one over on anybody. She came here and, and is earnest. Um, how do you know 
that she's the best uh, we have to test if we're, if we're going to be doing such a public test. Well, for one thing, uh, two of the new additions to the protocol is that you have to have a media presence. Uh, that is, if somebody has paid some attention to you before, that you're not just somebody living in an attic who decides to send us a letter and wants a million dollars. And the second thing is that we have to have an academic reference, which Connie provided to us, saying that she had done a test which was relatively successful and certainly promised that uh, it seemed to produce uh, indications that it would be successful in a, in a formal test. So that is part of the filtration. But I will admit to you that it is difficult to do. And we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to leave anybody out who uh, has a legitimate claim they really believe they can fulfill. So it is a difficult procedure. I, I agree with you there. I, I just want to make sure that the perception isn't that we're choosing anyone. Um, everyone who goes through the application process gets tested. So we don't have, oh, let's test this one, or let's test that one. Every single person who goes through the application process gets tested. <coughs> if, in fact, they have a testable claim. Well, they won't get through the process right. if they don't. Yeah. Yes, but, that, that's a preliminary. But Connie was the only one that you had available to you for such a public uh, display uh, this weekend? Um, we have several people, several players who are going through the process right now. She happened to be the next one. We can't. Oh, gotcha. We can't let people go out of order and be tested out of order because if one of them actually does pass the preliminary, then that's not fair to all the people who have been waiting. So she was the next in line. Question to Phil Plate. Phil is the year now since you've been the president? Uh, almost, yes. Um, you must be, I would trust you're quite satisfied with the way things are going. What is your opinion of the continuation or the possible continuation of the million dollar challenge? Well, I'm thrilled. Um, I think that's not just possible, it is continuing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, in, in what state it will continue, we're still working on it. That's what I mean. I wasn't yes. sure. Yeah. Um, the, the million dollar challenge, I think, is a fascinating uh, tool to, to, test, to test claimants and to see um, how this works, to, see, to, well, excuse me, to give the public a chance to see how this works. This is a beautiful example of that because now we have, we have an audience and we have an online audience. And it's, a, it's, it's not a, well, it is, in fact, a scientific process. There is a claim that is made. We work out a, a testing protocol for it. There are statistics involved. She had to pick three cards. There's a one in 10 chance each time. They're independent each time. So in fact, to get all three right, there is a one in 1,000 chance. Now, if we were to run this test a 1,000 times, there would be a much higher, higher chance of somebody winning. But in each individual test, it's one in 1,000. So if someone, and that, that is by pure chance only, so if someone has an ability, then we, we, we should see um, uh, a different amount of, of people being able to, to pass this test. So I, I like this idea as a scientist because it, it is scientifically testing an unusual claim. And I like the idea that we're going to continue it because I think it's, a, it's an excellent tool for this. It shows the public how this all works. It shows the public how skeptics analyze evidence. And however we change the challenge in the future, I think that's still going to be at the core of it. It's just going to be more of an administrative change when we do it to make it more streamlined and more efficient so that people can apply more easily and they can be tested more easily. Would you be happy in a year's time to offer Connie another chance? <coughs> that's a protocol question that would go to Jeff or Allison, how, how that works. Yes, she can be tested if she reapplies and fits the qualifications that are in place at that time. Uh, yeah, Naomi Baker, Houston Skeptic Society. A question from the chat is very related to what Richard just asked. Is, do you feel that there's some future time that you would reapply for a similar or slightly changed test when you feel that it was time for your powers to be revealed, as you said earlier? Does that, does that make sense? Do you think there's some future time? You mentioned that this was not the correct time to be the, the truth to be shown. That's true. Are you able to tell when that might be the right time? No, because I can't say the, the time or reason for things. Well, thank you. Should you feel that that time is upon you, would you reapply for the challenge and try again? I don't think so. Okay. Check, check. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm just wondering, has anyone ever gotten past the protocol? Past the preliminary testing? No one has ever passed the preliminary test in the history of the challenge. 